To most people, the body is the vehicle that carries us through life. Often seen as defenseless and naked, many weapons have been created to protect it. But the body itself can become a weapon, as sharp as a knife and as lethal as a firearm. Enter the body weapon. Throughout this video, Master Jerry Bell, the world-renowned Ninth Dan Grand Master of the Martial Arts, brings us an inside view on how the body can be trained, honed, and fine-tuned to become as deadly as any instrument. Join us on this journey of the history and the secrets of the martial arts and witness firsthand the beauty, elegance, and power of the body weapon. Most people have a misunderstanding of where martial arts is derived. In the beginning of creation, man's original birthplace on this vast globe was Africa. Through tribal wars and his conflict with one another, man's primitive way of self-defense was through understanding his physical body and spirituality. During this time, mankind had no knowledge of material weapons, such as guns and nuclear devices as we do today. The only means of defense that they were able to depend upon was the body weapon. When we think of the body, we must understand that it has the ability to become a weapon. Through the conflict in Africa, the Africans were the first to devise hand-to-hand -hand combat. Many settlers from the other parts of the world traveled through Africa and sadly, instead of appreciating its beauty, riches, and people, they invaded the land and unlawfully began to take what was not theirs. The Africans had many great kings who reigned over dynasties and kingdoms from the Sahara to the Nile Valley. The Sudan in Arabic is pronounced Bilad as Sudan, which means land of the black people. Throughout West Africa and East Africa, the Africans fought against the French and the British crown. Mistakenly, most people think that martial arts came to the world by way of China and Japan, when in fact, the first unarmed defense came through the Africans defending their land and people. When we speak of kings, sultans, and great warriors of Africa, we must mention the history of the legendary King Baltasar, King Solomon, and King Tunka Menon of Ghana, who could deploy 40,000 archers in battle three centuries ago. The great King Shaka, founder of the Zulu nation, defeated the British in the 19th century. And Muhammad Tour, a great warrior of the 15th century, whose men were great horseback archers, would give the illusion of vanishing in the night mist, a trait carried over by the Japanese ninjas. And the Emperor Amir al Muslimin, commander of the faithful who was still considered a priest king, often reputed to be a great magician. He maintained a professional army with the cavalry and its nucleus, which included men and women. The hand-to-hand -hand combat of Africa has fascinated many generations. The eyewitness accounts and the oral history of the Africans to this day are hidden or misunderstood, including the variety of weapons such as distinctive African forms, as in throwing knives, armed daggers, and unarmed forms, which the Japanese would call kata. Through the travels of Africans to different continents, such as Japan, China, Malaysia, and Mongolia, the African warriors would make trade with these people and teach not only their unarmed defenses and trading their weapons, but also taught the Japanese and Chinese traditional herbal medicine. Grandmaster Jerry Bell has had the opportunity to study and research the art of unarmed combat, African and Asian alike. Through his studies, he has obtained the knowledge necessary to demonstrate martial arts in its authenticity. What is Karate Do? Karate Do is a martial art for the development of character through training and enabling the karateka to surmount any obstacle, tangible or intangible. Deciding who is the winner and who is the loser is not the ultimate objective. Karate Do is an empty-handed art of self-defense in which the arms and legs are systematically trained. An enemy attacking by surprise can then be controlled or killed by body movements with strength comparable to the use of actual weapons. 
The techniques of Karate Do are well controlled according to the Karateka's will and are directed at the target accurately and spontaneously. As Master Gichian Funakoshi would say repeatedly, the first purpose in pursuing this art is the nurturing of the sublime spirit, a spirit of humility, simultaneously power sufficient to destroy a ferocious wild animal with a single blow should be developed. Becoming a true follower of Karate Do is possible only when one attains perfection in these two aspects, the one spiritual, the other physical. There are true legends and great warriors, but among them are noble men who give us great knowledge. One such man is Master Jerry Bell. 